the breaches still continue to happen. So how can we close on that gap? How do I get to know that they're working without getting hacked? And, and offensive security is the answer. In a pen test, I get two, three critical findings that are actual doors that I close on a hacker. We don't know what we will uncover. Focus on the problem and always remember why you're in the game. Otherwise, you will knock yourself out of it sooner yeah. than later. Who says tech can't be human? What's going on, Hacker Valley fam? Welcome back to the show. We are at Black Hat 2024. It is an amazing conference. If you're not here, don't worry. We're going to bring the conference to you. And we can't do it without special guests. Today, my special guest is Samant Segal, CEO and founder of Breach Log. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me on. Thank you for coming on. I was super excited about partnering with Breach Log, learning more about you. The team was so passionate to have you on the show. And they said, hey, this is going to be your best podcast ever. So you have some big shoes to fill. No problem. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about Breach Log. I, you know, I've done my research, done my homework. I know that focuses on penetration testing. You know, before we hit record, we're talking about EASM, external attack surface management. But, you know, how would you describe the company? So BreachLock is a complete offensive security uh, partner for any uh, enterprise. Um, you know, we have three buckets that we fill uh, in the offensive security uh, area. The first one is obviously pen testing as service. That's yeah. what we pioneered in the past five and a half years. The second one is uh, external attack surface management, right? Uh, so we help companies with that. And the third one is red teaming as service, right? Mm -hmm. In short, it's it's a way for CISOs uh, to to have an offensive security lens yeah. on their security investments and kind of prepare themselves to see how they can be broken into, how their incident management would respond uh, when when there's a break in, and how can they improve their detection, right? So it's a full uh, uh, you know health check. Yeah. On their security ecosystem. And like I said, we're a partner. What that means is it's one platform where they see all these solutions consolidated. And that means that they don't have to go to five vendors to, to check, uh, you know, web apps or APIs right. or network. They can get all in one single platform. If a CISO came to me and said, Ron, should I invest in red teaming or pen testing? I would be like, I don't know. It's a tough one. How, if you could only invest in one thing or offer one thing to your, your customers and prospects, which one would you start with? That's a great question. Uh, so look, you know, the, the way I always explain this to CISO is kind of, it depends on what do you think your maturity level is, yeah. right? When hackers look at you, they, they don't care what your policies are. Uh, they don't care if it's a low, medium or high criticality asset. I know the industry is very big on, hey, we need to classify asset inventory, this and that. But hackers don't care about all of that. They're coming from an outside in perspective. Um, so it kind of depends on where you see yourself in the maturity uh, cycle. And yeah. what I mean with that, if, you know, if you've not even done your basic hygiene well, and that's pen testing, yeah. right? And the other aspect of this is that if you have done the hygiene checks, yeah. uh, then there's more uh, parts of the ecosystem that come into play. And what do I mean with that? That means people and processes. And that's where red teaming comes in. So red teaming comes in from an ecosystem perspective. Mm -hmm. um, how are you a target? For a hacker, when they look at your people, we know you know security awareness in itself is a very big industry in cybersecurity, and we know a lot of incidents that happen mostly come through spear phishing attacks or you know uh, things of that nature. Uh, you know, it it takes uh, a lot of awareness uh, for the employees to be able to learn that, and I think red teams can help with that. And once you get through that spear phishing phase, then we get to your endpoint detection, there's always that one trick that we can use to bypass even the best of the EDRs in right. the world. And, and, you know, not to undermine the investments that are made in EDRs. I think they're still very good investment, but that's not unbreakable, right? Uh, and once you have done that, then you look how you can move laterally and exfiltrate data and connect it to a command and control center. So that's what all red teaming is about. It's a combination of people process technology. Pen testing, on the other hand, is basic hygiene. It's not optional. I mean, you, you, it's almost a crime to put something of value um, in production without 
running a pen test on it. I can't, I, I mean, I can't take that. Yeah. I think that happens more than we would like just because of the nature of business. We have to generate revenue. And sometimes that means just putting something out there or making a fix that you don't necessarily know the consequences to. Let's say that you were an alter ego of yourself coming in as a black hat hacker, right? We're at black hat and you're trying to breach a company. What, what are the things that you want? Is it, would it be money? Would it be data? Would it be intellectual property, customer data? What do you think is that high value asset for attackers? Yeah, it's, it's all of that, right? It, it's all of that. And basically you have to think about the threat actor. If the threat actor is nation state, they would have very different goals. Uh, if it's your competitor, they would have different goals like corporate espionage. Yeah. Um, and if it's just a script kitty doing it for, you know, fun and uh, money, then it's a different goal, right? right? So you always have to think in the, in the threat actor's shoes. The biggest misconception in this industry is that hackers are always looking for the most difficult way in. And that's totally not so true. They don't care about the investments that you've made in your EDRs and stuff. They're always looking for a low hanging fruit. So if they find something that's easy way to get in, they will. I'd like to jump in for a second to share some details about our sponsor for this episode, BreachLock. We know in the world of cybersecurity, waiting for an attack is not an option. The best way forward is to take the fight back to the attackers. The team at BreachLock are pioneers in the space. They don't just defend, they think like the attacker does. BreachLock's offensive security solutions empowers teams to stay proactive in identifying and mitigating risks before the attackers have the opportunity to strike. BreachLock is a global leader in continuous attack surface discovery and penetration testing. They're trusted by over 1,000 enterprises across 20 countries. BreachLock has discovered over 1 million vulnerabilities and conducted over 30,000 penetration tests. Their in-house ethical hackers have performed tests on web applications, mobile apps, network endpoints, APIs, and more. With BreachLock, you can continuously discover, prioritize, and mitigate exposures with evidence-backed penetration testing, attack service management, and red teaming. It's time to get proactive and make the attackers uncomfortable. Visit BreachLock.com today and secure your enterprise before the breach. Thank you, BreachLock, for sponsoring this episode. Hackers are not stupid. They're always looking for the easiest way in. So even if you have the best of EDRs, you configured your firewalls well, and there's that one simple connection that you left open or a patch that was released eight months ago, and you didn't pass that, you know, they are going to take that route. They don't care about your EDRs and yep. the millions of dollars that you've spent. And I think that's where the industry needs to uh, kind of cope up, right? But I would look at all of that, you know, I'm, I'm go depending on who I'm playing on that day as right. a threat actor, right? That would change what I look at. But by the end of the day, I'm still going to look at the easiest way in. You know, the whole continuous angle, just, just as a nice segue uh, to this with, with security, mm -hmm. the continuous security testing, continuous pen testing. Why that's important is that what is a low hanging fruit? It's, it's the lowest one that was hanging. If you take that out, it's the next one. Yeah. Right. So it's also a continuous process. Just another way of looking at it as a hacker. I see exposure management kind of emerging as a term that people are using interchangeably with attack service management. And I think when it comes down to whatever strategy that you decide, whether it be EASM, pen testing as a service, red team as a service, you have to have a trusted partner. And that's one of the gripes I hear from cybersecurity practitioners is I don't trust my vendor. Do you think that your background as a cybersecurity practitioner has helped establish and you know, cultivate some of that trust? Oh, absolutely. I think it's, uh, you know, and I've, 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 I've had a lot of those conversations at Black Hat. And the first thing I tell NEC so that I'm meeting is like, hey, look, talk to me like a practitioner. I'm yeah. a practitioner, you know, I'm not a sales guy. Uh, and so let's discuss the problems you have. And if I've seen the movie before, you know, I'm here to help, right? Right. Uh, so I think it goes a long way. I've spent 25 years in the industry. I was in the bias shoes. So I bought it from, you know, all the big fours, pen testing from big fours and some of the biggest names in the industry. Uh, so I know what their strengths are. I know what the gaps are. I know where the process is lacking. Yeah. And when I'm able to speak to them about the life that they're living, uh, you know, because I've been in their shoes, uh, I think it takes the conversation to an altogether uh, different level of trust. Um, and I think like cybersecurity is all about trust, right? So they're mm -hmm. not wrong in uh, telling you that that's what they're after. And trust is very simple. 
do what you say and say what you do, right? And I think our our industry needs to learn that uh, a bit more than yeah. it already is. And you know, uh, you can be just very open about promises that you're making, but you aren't sure about it. And you know, it can be an exploration when you're not uh, when you're not sure of uh, how it'll, how it'll turn out to be in the end. Yep. For example, I'll take an anecdote to that. You know, whenever we do a red team exercise for a client, we always tell them that we're drawing an attack tree. Uh, but I'm guaranteeing you now, when we finish the red team, this would look way different yeah. than how we've planned it because we don't know what we will uncover. So I think things, little things like that go a long way in managing expectations with mm. clients and that's how you can build trust. Yeah, clear communication goes a long way, like you're saying. Let me ask you about yourself for a second. You're building this company. Sounds like you're loving it. What's your why as to you know continue on? Yeah, so I think uh, when I got my hands into offensive security initially, even in my previous avatar where I was uh, you know on the buying side of the table, what I saw, and I've done a lot, right? I've done yeah. detection, I've done application security, I've done offensive security, I've done you know boring identity access <laughs> management stuff, SOX <laughs> controls. I've done it all. Then when I looked at offensive security, there was an immediate return on investment, right? So I was comparing like a detection solution, the way we would have a, let's say a couple of million dollars worth of contract and that we'd be looking for a needle in a haystack and yeah. we wouldn't find it uh, throughout the year. And like I said, you know, nobody wants to be hacked. So hopefully you will never find it, right? Uh, on the other hand, if I put like 30 grands in a pen test, I get two, three critical findings that are actual doors that I close on a hacker, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so my why is that? Like, okay, fine, we're spending money, but the breaches still continue to happen. So how can we close on that gap, you know? Yeah. Again, not to undermine all the defense uh, investments that we are making. They're absolutely required and they're very useful. But how do I get to know that they're working without getting hacked? And, and offensive security is the answer. So just having those CISOs um, you know, get them the bang for the buck. And right. basically in the end, the why is to uh, have a more safe cyberspace, yeah. right? That's the real why, because in the end, I think it's a noble cause. We are not just protecting corporation money. In the end, it's always somebody's credit card data, somebody's healthcare data, mm -hmm. somebody's PII data, and they're all paying for those uh, security measures, right? So right. it's not for free. I got into this because there was a good versus bad fight. Uh, that's the thing that excited me the most. And I think uh, we have a lot of work to do in that space. There's still breaches happening. And I think uh, BreachLock and myself, you know, we're doing our part in making sure that uh, the CISOs get to know before time. Uh, so that's not all bad news uh, and it's not all in the press. Uh, they, they get to know about the gaps before time and they can act on it proactively by remediating those. And I think in that way, BreachLock is doing its bit to keep the cyberspace a bit safe. Love that. There's people like myself that work in cybersecurity that have that dream of being an entrepreneur, a tech entrepreneur, a cybersecurity entrepreneur. What advice would you have for someone that has a practitioner background to get a little bit closer of identifying if being a cybersecurity CEO is for them? Well, to be an entrepreneur, I mean, the most important thing is uh, the why. And if it's money, go back to question number one again, right? <laughs> uh, that part will come in a lot later when you've actually solved the problem. And yeah. before that, there's a long journey that you have to make. For sure. And it's filled with a lot of uh, challenges, especially for me, my journey uh, initially or even today is pretty much bootstrapped, I would say to a great extent compared to what our competitors have uh, raised. You know, we've raised, I would say nothing, right? <laughs> and, and we are still incredibly able to help clients. So for any entrepreneur, the most important thing is the why, mm. and uh, it can never be money, right? Yeah. So you have to ba go back to the question again, if that. And once you've sorted out the why, um, then you have to get back to the problem that you're solving, you know? Yeah. And you love your solution, but nobody else cares about that, right? Uh, people that are buying for you, from you are caring about the problem that they have mm -hmm. and they are desperately looking for help, right? So if you uh, go to somebody that comes to you that, hey, this is my problem and all you're singing about is uh, you know, your solution because you love it so much, uh, guess what? You're not going to make a sale and you're going to probably lose the uh, prospect's interest, right. right? So I think those are two most important things. Focus on the problem and always remember why you're in the game. Otherwise, you will knock yourself out of it sooner yeah. than later. Well, you sound passionate on the subject. I love it. I, could, I, I feed off of stuff like that. 
I'm rooting for you. I'm wishing you and the Breach Lock team the best. And also, thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts to taking some time out of your busy day to jump on the mics with us at Black Hat. If you haven't done so already, be sure to check out Breach Lock. Follow them on all the platforms and also follow Samant. By the way, this is Black Hat 2024, where there's a lot going on. Samant, I hope you have a great rest of your conference and experience. And with that, we will see everyone next time.